Chapter 3 Trials of Strength Robin was awake early the next morning. He was rested after his long journey and was soon springing lightly down the long staircase of Gamwell Hall to where his cousin, Will, was at breakfast. Good morning, Will, said Robin. Hello, Robin, returned Will with a smile. I've got some dull news for you. What's that? asked Robin. He sat down at the table. My cousin is coming to stay here for a week. What's dull about that? asked Robin. He might be good fun. It isn't a he, it's a she. Oh, said Robin. That was different. Boys were usually good fun, but girls were so soft, and they played such silly games. Yet in spite of himself, Robin could not help liking Maid Marian when he met her later that morning. She was pretty and ladylike, it was true, but she also had an imp of mischief in her eyes and liked to take part in all the boys' games. She could outpace any of the boys in running, and she was no mean markswoman with the bow and arrow. Robin liked her from the first. Squire Gamwell held a great feast at Gamwell Hall, and he invited all the villagers from round about, as well as his large number of friends from outlying districts. The guests had a jolly time, and the merry peals of laughter rang out until they could be heard far away from the estate. A great meal was prepared and set out on the long trestle tables that were placed around the hall, and afterwards, when everyone had eaten their fill, the squire suggested that all the guests should go to the lawn where some sports would be held. The guests soon made a large semicircle on the grass. We need a queen of ceremonies, cried one of the party, and his cry was taken up by all the young folk present. There was no question as to who would be made queen, for Maid Marian was without doubt the most beautiful young lady present at the gathering. She was soon brought forward and crowned queen. Squire Gamwell placed a seat on a table, and Maid Marian was hoisted up to her throne. As Queen of Ceremonies, she announced with a smile, I command that the young men shall match their strength against one another. Robin was excited about the challenge thrown out. He had practised hard at all the boys' sports of the day with the youngsters from his own district, and though he was a stranger here, he was determined to show his skill to the lovely maid Marian. He knew that he was no match against rivals who were really experienced at the art of quarter-staff fighting. However, he fought bravely and fiercely. His youthful training was useful to him, and he found himself winning against each contestant. Robin was as pleased as they were surprised. His quarter-staff whirled about their heads more quickly than did their staffs, and when his staff struck his opponent's, Robin's strength was such that the staff was driven out of the rival's hands. Maid Marian was delighted with her friend's skill. She watched with pride as next Robin was matched against the young men with swords. It was no match at all. Robin was quicker on his feet than they were. The young men fought hard to win the contest, for they felt annoyed that this unknown youth should be so much better than they. Their efforts were not enough, however, and Robin won every contest. Bravo! cried the Queen of Ceremonies. 
It was Marion's only wish now that Robin would win the final series of contest with the bow and arrows. She felt sure that he would beat all rivals, but Squire Gamwell, knowing how skilful were the other young men at this sport, had little hope that his brave young nephew would put up much of a show as an archer. He's got the strength of a man in his young body, whispered the squire to Robin's mother as they watched the contest, but it's something more than strength that is wanted with the bow. It's a good eye and a steady aim. At last came the trial. When Robin's turn came, he put into use all that he had learned from his continual practice ever since as a boy. He had been inspired by the tale of Sir Guy and the wild boar. Robin's arrow went straight to the centre of the target, yet his was not the only arrow that went quivering to the mark. One or two of the other fellows were skilful enough to score a bull's-eye. There had to be some other way to decide the winner. The youths appealed to Maid Marion to suggest how the winner should be selected. Robin came to the rescue with an idea. He ran to Maid Marion and whispered into her ear. That is a fine idea, Robin, she said as he jumped down from the table. She turned to the crowd. I command that a slender willow reed shall be placed in the ground, and any one who can hit it with his arrow from forty paces shall be the winner. The youth stood looking on while Robin fixed up the rod. Some of them laughed. What? Why, it would be impossible to hit that, one cried. All the young men agreed. Then watch this, said Robin. He drew his bow, and taking careful aim, he shot his arrow. The whole gathering was breathlessly silent. All eyes were turned towards the slender rod of willow. Crack! The willow rod was split in two as the arrow from Robin's bow pierced it. A roar of applause went up. Robin's mother was proud of her son that day, but Maid Marian was even more thrilled at the skill of her new-found friend. End of chapter 3